So let's kick off. Our first speaker tonight is Dr. Michael Malone. Michael is Director of Curriculum and Information Services at Southeastern Regional College. He's going to talk about a new learning and assessment model, project-based learning, and how it can be used in different educational environments. Michael, if you're there, here we go. I'll hand I'll over to you there, Michael. Michael. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you again for, to the BBC for inviting me to present to you tonight. Uh, the title of my talk tonight is Embracing the Learning Revolution, because I believe that we need a revolution in learning. Uh, and the COVID epidemic uh, or pandemic has helped actually generate that. CERC, Southeastern Regional College, uh, has 4,500 full-time students, so it's a, a fairly big college, even in the UK standard. 8,000 part-time students, and we have four large campuses in St. Patrick, Lisburn, Newton Arch, and Bangor, and four smaller campuses. And you'll see some images of them there. Now that's, as you can see from the photograph, my hair's a little bit greyer. That photograph was taken quite a few years ago, but uh, I have, you know, we've invested in the curriculum at CERC, uh, over the last number of years, particularly in the field of project-based learning and entrepreneurs in their own right. My background is electronic engineering, and I have uh, brought three Beacon and Vecto Awards to the college over my career, developed the PBL model at CERC in 2015, and that has now been applied across all disciplines and levels. And we teach from level naught through to level eight, and we have, uh, over 50 different disciplines in the college. Uh, I've been working in the college now for 39 years, although you probably, that photograph makes me look a little bit younger, uh, 24 years as a lecturer. So I, I know it from both the manager side and the lecturer side. And a little fact about me, I developed the first college website in 1994, so over 26 years ago. Uh, I developed the first uh, college website. So why is a revolution important? And obviously there are a number of issues with the current teaching model. First of all, the focus on external examinations. And we've seen how that is now a weak link. And we have thought that has been a weak link for quite a while. It's just been uh, highlighted this year. That model also focuses on individual assessment. Uh, majority of teaching is face to face and very little focus on developing skills, technical or transversal. And I'm going to talk about what we mean by transversal a little bit later on. Students achieve obviously as individuals uh, and there's very little group work. Uh, and good digital pedagogy is limited. Uh, lots of stuff placed or, or, or resources placed online, but how is that actually being used in the delivery of learning? That's the, I think, where work has to be done. Entrepreneurial activity. We hear we need lots of entrepreneurs in Northern Ireland, and particularly after COVID, where are we getting those entrepreneurs from? And that has to be generated, I believe, much earlier on. And the other issue with the current model is the students now live in a digital world an awful lot of their activity takes place online, and we need to embrace that, not fight against it. So those are, I think, some of the issues. That was pre-COVID. What has happened since? Well, blended learning and online learning is now, uh, uh, and we use the phrase online and uh, on campus. Access to digital platforms uh, for students is extremely important if they're going to continue online focus on continuous assessment, students collaborating in groups, and focus on those skills, technical and transversal, and encouraging student entrepreneurs from the very start. So how do we do this? Well, we have a number of uh, models or a number of components in our revolutionary strategy. The first is the learning and assessment model, and we have developed a project-based learning model which has been used in the past, but we have now honed it and, and learned from some of the best examples around the world. 
online and on campus, we have forbidden the use of the word remote learning, project-based learning and technical skills. Students are online, they're not remote, they're working collaboratively with uh, their peers with uh, moderation from their tutors on project-based learning projects. And I'm gonna talk about what we mean by that uh, in a few minutes. Staff CPD is yeah. extremely important. Staff need to unlearn some of the pedagogy they have developed over the last number of years, and they need to relearn new skills. And that's extremely difficult for uh, teachers to unlearn and relearn new skills. Digital tools and connectivity, extremely important. Uh, and what we mean by that is e-portfolios, video calls, collaboration, etc. Enterprise and entrepreneurship, also uh, a key element of this. And we do this right at the very start of the year with Enterprise Fortnite. All of our 4,500 full-time students participate in this. These are apprentices, higher education students, level two, level three, and even level one students. All participate in that. And we just finished the final of that. Uh, yesterday. And as an engineer, I, I mentioned my background in electronic engineer, review and evaluate. What did you set out to do? And did you actually achieve that? And how can you further enhance it and uh, learn from others? And as we have learned from our international partners, we want to share some of that good practice, hopefully with others tonight. So the learning and assessment model has a number of key components, the vocational skills, and that's the practical hands-on for an engineer. Uh, it's uh, creating circuit boards, it might be using CNC machines, et cetera. Our students need to have literacy and numeracy. And we have lots of students who uh, are coming out of the school system with no literacy and numeracy. And we, we provide that as part of the package. The transversal skills are extremely important and we use the UNESCO and SIA and DFE agreed uh, definition of those transversal skills, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later on. And enterprise and entrepreneurship is a key element in that particular learning mix, because this is, provides a focus for the learning. Students will learn best when they know why they're learning something. And our, our focus is always on learning and not so much on the curriculum itself and, and the exams. Collaboration is very, very important for us and we encourage uh, different disciplines. We have over 50 in the college. And we encourage interdisciplinary uh, project approaches. So for example, we may have hairdressers working with software engineers. We may have science working with uh, catering and that generates uh, innovation and creativity. We also work with a lot of external partners, Fourth Valley, and uh, Walsall Colleges, Fourth Valley in Scotland and Walsall just north of Birmingham. We also work with a lot of other international partners in other countries, in the Basque country, in Denmark, etc. So learning from others is a key part of project-based learning. Project-based learning or PBL. What is it and why do you need to know about it? CERC are using PBL across all vocational courses. So let's take a moment to learn more about it and see how you might implement it. The students will be asked to carry out a range of tasks that will vary from presentation to the whole group to collaborative working and individual research. This means the physical environment needs to be flexible to enable quick and easy reconfiguration of the room or laboratory. PBL is learn as you do, which has many benefits. Students construct their own knowledge rather than reproducing the facts. This takes place through a series of projects. Learn as you do is much more effective than learn then do. When students learn about a subject and then complete associated practical work, they may find it difficult to apply the theory. What is needed is contextualization of the subject based around a real world activity. This is the starting point for PBL. Your first task is to define the real world challenge. This allows students to learn and develop a range of skills that will stay with them for life. Communication, teamwork, negotiation, research, digital skills, critical thinking, innovation and creativity, and conflict resolution. Students develop skills easier, working in small PBL teams, learning from each other. 
how do you ensure that each member of the PBL team contributes? In a social contract, roles and responsibilities need defined and agreed by each team member. Each member of the team signs a contract which defines what they will do and when they will do it by. Effective planning is key and lecturers must monitor and provide feedback throughout all stages of development. Students develop their skills further when they present the alternative options and learn to compromise to select the best solution within the constraints they have been given. Developing the action plan with timelines and assigning roles and responsibilities to each team member is the natural progression of the process. The PBL teams now implement their agreed action plan. The final stages are to review and evaluate the project outcomes with external industry representatives, their peers and their tutors. The approach to PBL varies from one curriculum area to another. There is no right or wrong. Ultimately, we want to prepare students for the world of work and help them develop the right skills, attitudes and behaviours. Projects that cross various curriculum areas enhance opportunities for innovation and creativity and better reflect the workplace. Any PBL projects should be discussed with your awarding organisation in advance to confirm they understand the approach and approve the assessment process. Have a look at the examples in the next clip and see if you can select one that will give you a good starting point, or even better. So that little uh, clip that we created there was really to provide some background for our staff so that they understand the model that we're trying to deliver. You'll see the 12 stage process there. The, the 12th stage is operate and that's where we ask students to turn their pro project, if it's got potential, into an enterprise or uh, a college company. So. For us uh, as an engineer, very important that we have a process that people understand, well thought through, and actually explain that to them so that they, they know the, the stages in this. It doesn't have to be followed slavishly, but uh, the, we, we do encourage and we've trained all our staff in the, the principles of this. Now, one of the things we found uh, over, uh, and we've been doing this now for about five or six years, is that uh, the projects tended to go up in all sorts of different directions. And what we did last year was we started to create themes that the project should follow. And you'll see these are the projects from the themes from last year. And you had mindfulness in there, food, healthy eating, etc., upcycling, reduced waste, energy conservation, enterprise entrepreneurship. Those were all the areas, and we would ask students and staff to design projects with maybe two or three themes uh, around that. They then ended up in a, a focus for us on well-being and the environment. And again, these are pre-COVID, so you can see they fit very nicely in with the whole COVID constraints that we operate with them. I mentioned before the transversal skills, and you'll see again, these are defined internationally, and we, we simply adopted them and started to look at how we can map them and develop in our, in our students. Citizenship, respect for cultural diversity and your contribution to society. We encourage that from the very start. Digital literacy, and now we see how important it is uh, that they have good digital literacy, both staff and students. Self-management, how do you look, look after the, the, and manage your own tasks and change the priorities because uh, the priorities will change uh, throughout your working life. Problem solving, working with others and your ability to negotiate with others and your approach to uh, and professionalism with regard to study and to work. Those are all the transversal skills that we encourage with our students. Now, a key part of project-based learning that you'll see throughout the world is uh, expos and we have an enterprise fortnight. In September, right at the start of term, all students, 4,500 full-time students, participate in this. Students are assigned to groups according to their, their particular uh, bias in terms of whether they're an innovative person or a very structured and planned uh, type of person. Projects are planned to follow the themes. The expo takes place at the end of the two weeks. And you'll see these are photographs from last year's and we put this year's on socially distanced with staggered times on the different campuses and different days rather than just a baton of it. This is a key part of 
uh, project-based learning because students need affirmation of the work, the good work and fantastic work that they produce. Student projects are judged externally by uh, judges and the best student groups then compete in the competition and they win prizes. And that is, again is a good incentive for them. Here you'll see some clips from last year's uh, student expo. There be lots of different disciplines and staff interviewing those students and assessing their work. You see lots of food from our caterers, but there's health and social care early years. Uh, some of our motor vehicle students working on braking systems. Our plumbing students recycling old copper in the uh, devices. And yours truly, they're getting some free samples on the, the net as well. Lots of healthy kids. These are all healthy kids, by the way. And that's the principal then talking to some of our students. Our applied science. And some of our health and social care students. So lots of different examples. But the, the, the benefit of last year, um, we were hoping you know, we could have repeated that, but we, we still went ahead and it was very successful. We'll talk a wee bit about that later on. So another element, as I said, in, in your uh, revolutionary strategy is what do you mean by online versus on campus? What, and what's going to take place? Now, the key elements in here when you're online is using those digital skills working on the projects collaboratively in groups, the tutor moderating those groups and making sure they're going in the right direction. And what we have found that has happened, uh, and to take away the stigma, you know, we will have staff and students we have already who have developed COVID or have symptoms, we flip the class and the students on uh, the, the tutor online until the uh, isolation period is over and then they come back into the college and pick up the skills. The on-campus element is the induction, meeting your tutor, developing the technical skills, and that's where students need access to special resources. They might be workshops, laboratories, uh, salons, uh, or theatres, and, and so on. And on average, across all of our curriculum, it's a 50-50 split between online and on-campus. So what are the tutor skills? And I know Paula and Stephanie were on a Monday night, uh, if you've listened to some of their presentation. I'm not gonna go into this in too much detail, but it is an extremely vital part of uh, the strategy. And that is the tutors need to know how to teach uh, in using PBL. Simply giving them uh, some handouts on it uh, and they just won't be able to absorb it. They need to be shown how they actually do it. And we put people through an intensive training program. Uh, and we have expert mentors and that continues right the way through the year. These are our staff that we have trained and we know they understand the concept and can apply it and teach it to others. And obviously what was right at 10 or 20 years ago doesn't apply now. The technology has moved on, the students have moved on, and we need to develop the tools that they require in the dashboard. Student digital skills and accessibility, a key element in this. If students are online, they don't have access to the internet, they can't work online. And what we think is uh, this should be a, an initiative from the, the various departments and the executive to ensure that all students have internet connectivity at home. It happens in other countries, it should happen here. Schools and colleges should loan PCs in the short term. Again, this could be another departmental initiative. There are lots of software applications currently free to, to students, but the question I would ask is, is it being fully exploited? An immediate training for students at the start of term so that they know how to use the digital tools in case they have to flip online. So overcoming digital advantage is a, a, a real important part of the strategy. And I'll talk about what we did on that during the lockdown uh, in a few minutes. Developing those digital skills, uh, we sort of defined there's three key elements to this. Now, everyone's familiar with the generic digital tools, Microsoft Office, internet browsers, 
uh, Windows operating systems and using their mobile phones. And what we found was by making a lot of the tools and, and uh, resources mobile friendly, the students were able to access it whenever they wanted and that really uh, caught hold with them. The resources, we use Moodle, but increasingly Microsoft Teams and Office 365, uh, OneDrive as well. And then for those specialist areas, we have vocational digital tools, such as Autodesk, Inventor, and SolidWorks, Adobe Creative Cloud, and uh, Logic Pro, etc. So those all uh, combine together to produce the digital skills that the students need at the college, but also for the world of work, and how to actually uh, interact and collaborate online. Now, as I said, a big part of our strategy is enterprise and entrepreneurship. And what we have done in this is we believe that there's a number of elements to this. The first is the enterprise aspect of it, and that takes place in the first fortnight. And I'll not go into all of the, the, the initiatives and, and uh, events that we put on, but basically we do enterprise with all of our students. We then encourage that innovation through specific uh, other events. And then finally, for those students who want to become entrepreneurs, we provide the support and encouragement through business mentoring with experts, real entrepreneurs outside, who can plug them into their network of entrepreneurs in the wider environment. And we then encourage those students to turn them into student companies. And then they are able to trade at CERC monthly student fairs internally. Again, a nice safe environment for those students to start trading and selling products that they have actually produced themselves. We have recruited a number of uh, staff dedicated to this across the college. And you'll see some up at the top who, uh, one is now head of school and a deputy head of school. And then the four innovation uh, advisors down at the bottom. Started off as interns and now uh, they're working directly with our students and student companies. We have uh, an entrepreneurs club that runs in the college and that's hosted by Professor Terence Brannigan. He's the chair, chair of the North Ireland Tourist Board and is our entrepreneur in residence. The students, as I mentioned, get immersion in the enterprise fortnight. And last year we generated 80 student companies and put on uh, about nine monthly uh, trade fairs. Here are some examples of uh, the work that the students produced, you know, different themes of Valentine's Day, Halloween, etc. Over 80 student companies varying from uh, copper craft, using old bits of uh, copper, cutting edge, a mechanical engineering company. In the bag was an art company. Uh, and uh, uh, the Water Boys was producing a low cost uh, water filter system for use in third world countries. And that got through to the Catalyst event uh, last year through to the uh, semi-finals. And we have a student through to the finals tonight in the Catalyst event uh, uh, taking place uh, as we speak. So lots of different areas there. Golden Memories was one that was started by a member of staff working with some of the health and social care uh, trusts and some of the, the, the old, old people's homes. So, what happened to us during lockdown? Well, it started off obviously with uh, like lots of other organizations, us giving out food parcels. Uh, we had our rapid prototypers making masks. We had our, our catering staff cooking food. We made screens for the college and we ordered uh, masks as well, branded masks. So lots of activity to help uh, develop that. Uh, you know, support the, the, the community during that initial dark time of crisis. But what happened with the curriculum? Well, the college went online within a week and we didn't close. We went online and opened for business. 330 PCs loaned to students. Classes continued, continued synchronously and followed their normal timetables. And we had almost all of our students engaged in their weekly timetable. We found within the first day, some students became even more engaged, which was a real uh, eye opener for us, and particularly at level one and two. By going into their digital world, they loved it. Significant increase, we moved from more Moodle to my, more Microsoft Teams, 
and we use Class Notebook as the e-portfolio. And almost all students, 99.5% of our 16,000 qualifications completed within the academic year, despite the meltdown of Ofqual, SIA, and the awarding organizations. Okay, so the Student Expo was organized this year that we had the 50-50 split, the e-portfolio for different types of, of curriculum that we had. We're developing our, our PBL projects even further. And if we have to, we uh, flip the staff and students online. 500 PCs will be loaned out this year. And back in March, we had an EPI inspection and you'll see some of the comments that they had at that stage, this is before the lockdown, on our digital skills and the, the balance of practical and theory and the project-based learning, which they described as sector leading. And then uh, one last example was the, uh, we, we bought a, uh, an old horse cart and converted it into a kitchen for our students, our catering students to use on the road. And that's me. Thank you very much indeed for your attention.